Travis here for GameSpot at BlizzCon 2015. I'm joined by Raynad, popular personality, streamer, casting here at the Hearthstone tournament happening right behind us. Uh, Raynad, what have you thought of BlizzCon so far? I know it's only been a couple hours, but first impressions? Oh, it's been amazing. A, lo a couple of the like announcements that they had, I, I heard about a little bit earlier, so, but, but even those things, they announced more than I expected, so it's just a lot of cool stuff from pretty much every game. Uh, what platforms you can buy and play Overwatch on was like huge. New heroes for uh, Heroes of Storm, new cards, it's all exciting stuff, so. It seems like it's a pretty good time for to be a Blizzard fan because there's like so much stuff going on. Uh, now, I, I don't know what your thoughts are so far on this Hearthstone tournament, but maybe we can talk a little bit before about you know leading up to this and sort of the players that are here. For the people who maybe haven't been following Hearthstone because they've been in Europe for some reason, uh, what you know what what's going on in this tournament? Are there any interesting storylines? Like, what are kind of the major narratives? Oh, well, basically, Kranich, a player from South Korea, I believe, he is the only player to be back this year in the top eight who was here last year. So um, basically it's a lot of new faces, fresh faces, still great players, people that we've seen in the scene in smaller tournaments. And uh, they're here representing their teams, their countries, uh, a lot more variety this year, honestly. Uh, the America's Championship was kind of like the, uh, the entire qualifier stage is basically a lot of different qualifiers that happened. And, uh, you know, we saw players represented from, like, South America, from everywhere. The America's Tournament happened in San Francisco. Um, every region had its own type of event. And, I, honestly, Europe probably had the strongest players, I would say, like the most well-known pros uh, qualified from Europe. Uh, but, it, really, it's anyone's game. It's a pretty level playing field, and I think all eight players could take it. So, so all eight players could take it, but do you have, like, a favorite at all? Or maybe a top two? Um... I think Ties is one of the best players in the tournament, but just by virtue of like the specific lineup he brought and the group he's in, it's actually harder for him to make it out compared to other players. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, a lot of strong players here. I guess if I had to pick a favorite, I would say I don't know, man. That's Askaka. I would say I would say Askaka would win. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now, the Hearthstone community, obviously, like this is a big exciting time for Blizzard fans, but I have noticed a lot of salt among the Hearthstone community lately. You're also kind of a, a salty guy on occasion, so I was curious if, as an expert in the salt, you could give me sort of your, your thoughts on the community's feelings and sentiments right now. Uh, well, first of all, Travis, I'm not salty. I'm known for my cheery disposition, love of the game, and huggable, politically correct and family-friendly personality and stream. But if I were salty, uh, like, honestly, the, the whole Reddit stuff that's been going on, it's just the Reddit echo chamber thing. It, it kind of spirals out of control no matter what they're ranting about. We've seen it a lot of times in any community. And honestly, when you get, like, an online forum, any kind of online forum that grows to that kind of size, it's going to become a cesspool. So I would say the community is actually pretty happy with the state of the game. We have all nine classes represented here. There's more diversity in Hearthstone on ladder and in tournaments than there's ever been before. And uh, everyone complaining is just doing it because it's cool now. Uh, take it from me, like I was complaining two years ago about the game. All I would do is bitch nonstop, left and right, and I was a bad guy for it. And now it's like now it's mainstream. So now I'm the guy like, no, Hearthstone's great, you know. So maybe it's the hipster coming out. I don't know. You don't think that it's a like that there's any staleness in the meta or that like secret paladins are just like too dominant or anything like that? No, there's there's like not even that many secret paladins in this tournament. Secret paladin is a Easy to play deck that beats that that lets bad players beat worse players basically, uh, which any like proactive strong linear strategy will do. But it's like it's like imagine in League of Legends if thousands and thousands of people were just screaming to nerf Blitzcrank because most of them were bronze level players. That's kind of the equivalent of what's happening right now. That would suck for me because I'm a Blitzcrank main, so I'd be very upset. Nobody's perfect, Travis. It's okay. How dare you? Um, either way, so they also had an adventure announced. Um, I think that the panel right now where they're showing a lot of that stuff is happening. I'm sure that you're privy to some stuff that maybe you can or can't talk about, but what, you know, are you excited about the adventure? I mean, it's kind of sets the timeline for expansions, adventure, expansion, adventure. Yeah, I mean, every uh, time they've announced new cards, I've said it's my favorite set so far, and I think, I mean, this is the case again. I think uh, 
the League of Explorers is probably my favorite set so far from what I've seen. A lot of the cards are very high impact, very influential. A lot of them seem strong. There's interesting like deck building decisions that they cause. The Cartographer is my favorite one, the one that like puts a map in your deck and then oh, yeah. you find the map and you find yeah, like, that whole Legendaries, thing. Legendaries. Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's a cool storyline in one card. So hopefully we we'll see more cool things like that. I hope Priest gets a two mana card and I hope Shaman gets a one mana card. And if all those things happen, I think uh, yeah, it'll be good for the game. Are you following any of the Heroes of the Storm stuff happening here? Because I know you, you do have a team. We do have a team. Uh, in fact, they're playing against, uh, well, one, one matchup that they're heavily favored in, but then they're playing against the Korean team that they lost to earlier in the group stages. They definitely have a way, way tougher group than the other group. But the thing is, the, they lost a 2-3 to three set against the team that's favored to win the tournament. And that set was incredibly close. The games that we won were very dominant. The games that we lost were very, very, like, just a couple, like one late game mistake and you lose, you know, you see it all the time in league. And uh, this is very like, we know you can beat them. That's important. And our team's playing great. I think that if they beat DK, uh, the Korean team, in the quarterfinals, or um, like in group stages, they will win the tournament. I really think they will. If they lose, which is equally likely, um, well then we're just eliminated. But, you know, I'm hoping for the former. Any excitement around the Heroes of the Storm stuff that got announced today? I mean, the champions are cool and all, but honestly, like, if, if you're... Heroes, heroes. The, the heroes, yeah. excuse me, are cool. I didn't use the, the C word. I'm sorry. I, I don't play... Oh, okay, that's my bad. I used, I used to call the League of Legends champions heroes, too, so I just always have it wrong. So you're just pissing everyone off. Right, yeah. Anyway, I, um, they're, they're awesome. A lot of, uh, like, the new game mode and all that. I think that... Something people should focus on, though, if you're interested in looking into Heroes, check out the competitive scene. Seriously, it is, as somebody that plays Heroes very, very rarely, it is one of my favorite esports to watch. There's always so much hype, so much action. The, the storylines for this event here are amazing. Any region can win. It's not like Korea is going to come in and dominate everybody. We don't know if Europe, NA, or Korea will win. They're all, like, equally good. So uh, just a great game to follow the competitive scene of, honestly. Is there anything that you would like to say that is not a 30 minute promotion of all your sponsors in your stream? Just kind of curious, anything you want to say to your fans? Why would I, why would I ever do that? I, I, don't, I don't need to, to go out of my way to promote my, my sponsors and my stream to make myself feel better. I'm, I'm always feeling great, I'm always feeling confident. Thanks to the form fitting clothing that I picked up at store.temposstorm.com. And uh, no man, other than that, always glad to do an interview with you man. Shout out to, to GameSpot for delivering quality content as always, and uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Looking forward to you casting in just a short time. Really appreciate the interview. It's so nice to see such a not so salty, upstanding, politically correct individual these days. Yeah, so thank you so much. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things BlizzCon at GameSpot.com.